folks, it's official. It's happened. The one and only Lance Lambert sent out a tweet yesterday saying that the 30-year mortgage rate is now 8%. Wow. That was uh, that was quite the tweet there, big boy. What's going on? Yeah, uh, crazy week. Uh, and, and really, if you zoom out, it's been a crazy two years. We've <laughs> yeah, gone, amen. Um, amen. We have gone from 2020, 2021, when affordability on a historic basis was actually relatively cheap on a historic oh, it, it was in the top it was it, my 50 year 53 year spreadsheet had it in the top five best affordability yeah yeah exactly and that was even with the price growth when you take factor in incomes mortgage rates and prices yep. and within just over two years we have went from one of the more affordable markets in history to one of the more expensive markets in history mm -hmm. and the most expensive in at least like 30 years Mm -hmm. And the speed of the change here has just been dramatic from two, three handle mortgage rates to seven, eight. And I know the average is for people who have better credit scores. So there are some people now pushing five, eight, five, getting closer to nine. Um, yeah. It's, if you're you know, an investor, uh, not with without perfect credit, you're probably in the nines. Yeah. It's so it, it's it, it's crazy to see what's happened. Yeah. So I guess the big question is, um, you know, kind of where we go from here. And again, the, I think the real interesting factor, because I'm kind of a data guy, not quite like you, you're next level, but we have higher rates heading into the winter, which is the slow seasonality. We still have, you know, really low inventory. What's going to win out is list. I think listings go up, but that is that just days on market expanding? Do, do we have, I know we have more cancellations. I've talked to people in the last 48 hours, cancellations are up, but you know, where do we go with inventory? Cause I'm even hearing some sellers, they're taking the properties off the market. Like, ah, we'll just wait for the spring. It's going to well, be a wild so winter. One thing that me and you have both talked about all year is that there's a headwind in the market, which is affordability. And there's a tailwind, which is tight resale supply. And then there's the element of seasonality. And we've kind of talked about the fact that because of the headwind and uh, tailwind being so strong, like you can have it to where seasonality, you, you feel seasonality more than you Correct. usually, like it feels abrupt, the swift, the shift between the season. And uh, it's possible that could be what's going on, right? Like, yes, mortgage rates getting up to 8% here versus seven or mid sixes. Yeah, that's of course you know, made affordability worse in the pinch. But I, I think a part of this is we're feeling the seasonality effect of a market that's that right. terrible affordability. Um, and then next spring, we don't have resale supply. Oh, uh, yeah. So it's, uh, you know, one thing, I, and I don't want to make predictions, but I, I you know, I'm going to stick to what we've been talking about, which is that the, the shift between seasonality could feel more jarring in this type of I, environment. I think and you're right. And again, data, data backs it up. Been that ra rates have also acted along with seasonality. Rates hit their highest in the weakest part of seasonality last year. And then Did? rates were their lowest, 5.99. I remember. Spring, and then now here we are testing eight during the yeah. soft part of seasonality. So that's making seasonality feel even more uh, ab abrupt, the move into it. Yeah. Um, and and so I, I think it goes to, you know, uh, back to how the market has reacted to rates, which is number one, there is going to be very few resale transactions occurring Q4. There's just not going to be many resale transactions current. This is essentially a deep freeze for transactions. I don't know how low you can actually go, but we're probably going to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's exactly right. I think that's what I've been trying to highlight the last month is. Um, you know, until this morning, which NAR put out their numbers this morning, the, the cycle low was January, which was 4.02 million. We just hit a new cycle low at 3.96. These are existing home sales. We're going lower. <laughs> the next three months, to your point, we're going to find out how low we can go. Yeah, I, I yeah, that, that's what it looks like. And um, now you can only kill churn once, which is somebody who wants to like, sell their home and go buy something new. They've already been out of the market. So you can yeah, only take them off yeah. once, right? So the people left are like the death, divorces, you know, yep. 
job job transfers, stop, um, stuff like that. And then the purchases are, you know, the other side of that lifestyle bit. And then, you know, first time buyers who are like, you know, rents are still moving up, uh, you know, prices haven't come down, kind of accepting it and biting the bullet, so to speak. Yeah. I think that's what a lot of people kind of in the Doomerville of Twitter don't understand or X, whatever we call it these days, is even in the worst of times, even in the most unaffordable market, which at least to date has been 1981, this year could could beat it. I don't know yet that the year's not over, but we still did two and a half million transactions, right? You still had death, divorce. You still had motivated sellers. You also had creative financing. What people don't realize about the 80s is Robert G. Allen, Carlton Sheets, all these guys, they cut their teeth. And I just interviewed somebody yesterday who was started buying in 1981. And you had to get creative to get deals done. Um, so there will be motivated sellers that need out. And, you know, sometimes it'll be sold on terms versus price. So yeah, it's, it's, I think that's it. Now, one thing that you do know is that if you're buying in this environment right now, and I'm not talking about next spring, I'm talking about right now, you know that that seller is probably motivated because why are they selling right now? No, no, I've been screaming that. I want people that follow one rental at a time that are doing the work to realize what you just said. If there is somebody selling a property with mortgage rates at 8% and days on market are growing, they're likely motivated. Yeah. So do the, do, do your best, find the deal that makes sense. And, and, you know, I'm getting notes almost every day from people that are getting 10, 15, 20% off the list price. You know, you can make it work. I don't care what the cost of capital is. There's some number that works for my buying criteria, right? That's how I see it. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so the thing I'm keeping an eye on is where does active listings get to? And I think you look at that on your market and does it continue yes. to grow into November? That would be a little bit of a signal of more market weakness uh, heading into next year. And, and then the other thing is where do these rates go? This is yeah. actually kind of, I mean, it's been a little weird the past few weeks like this yeah. recent run up. And you can tell that people are starting to get surprised. And it's not like like just us getting surprised. It's like some of the Fed members yeah. uh, where that one week, they all kind of came out and said, hey, we're probably we're done. done. You know, yeah. you guys have done our work for us, blah, blah, blah. So let, yeah. let's the, see uh, where where this bond market goes. Yeah, I, I, I've been calling the Fed the big bad wolf. I've been telling a story that I wanted to talk tough. The big bad wolf is sitting in a launch chair drinking an iced tea now. They're done. The market's gone up now today, I think like 48 basis points since their Fed meeting. The market's done almost two rate increases for them. Yeah. They're done. On, they're not raising on, rates. On no data. Like there's no not data. data that's been like, oh, that's like jarring. Like the narrative of the economy hasn't shifted at all. But no. the bond market has gone in and on this run higher for is, longer they get it now higher for longer yeah which is something still to keep an eye on yeah so at the end of the day um you're going to be watching active inventory by market yes that's what you, yeah i'm actually most interested in days on market because okay. for me days on market is again you got to remember i'm a buyer right is going to yeah. be the sign of stress the longer inventory stays on that is my key days on market you know, one uh, reason I don't is the data that I get days on market from, from Realtor.com. Mm-hmm. It, it kind of feels like it takes a while to get moved up. Like uh, right now, it's still very low. And so I feel like actives, I've always gotten a better pulse of things like that move, yeah. if that yeah. makes sense. No, it totally makes sense. And again, you're looking at data across the country. I'm looking at data in one market, right? That's very different. Your macro, I'm micro. How, uh, how but- much up is your days on market versus now versus the spring? Uh, about 30%, about 30%. Okay. And, then if, and then if you go one level deeper to back to our earlier conversation, days on market below the median, days on market above the median, days on market above the median is up 50%. Yeah. And and when does yours get, uh, when does days on market stop? Is it once it's pending for your market? Once, once it's pending. Yeah. Once yeah. See pending. realtor.com. T- it, I think it goes to like the sale. Um, and it, yeah. it's like, it's, it's a much bigger number than like the NAR number. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I still think it would be interesting because as long as it's the same calculation every time, it's, yeah. I don't really care what the number is. It's the change. It's the net change. Exactly. And that's what it is, is 
yeah, days on market from realtor.com works, but it just takes longer to get it in. Like it's yeah. going to be up 30% from yeah. the the low of the year, right. but it's not going to get it for a while. But yeah, active it's, it's, come it's right stale. away. I yeah. get it. Active is calculated by realtor.com, subtract pendings. Got which it. Is, yeah, which Makes is total longer. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, folks, housing, housing, housing. If you have not signed up for Resi Club at Resi Club Analytics, and you watch one rental at a time, I have no idea what you're doing. There should be 50,000 subscribers from one rental at a time at Resi Club Analytics. Just put your email, get five things free, and then if you're serious, check out Resi Club Pro. Anything else to say, Lance, as we wrap up? Yeah, well, so I want to pose a question to you. And if you okay. want to put this into a different segment, put it into a different segment. That works All for right. me. But uh, one thing that we've seen over the past two years is that groups like the Mortgage Bankers Association and Fannie Mae and a lot of other groups that talk to like mortgage brokers and out to the public, anytime mortgage rates have went from like three to four, they've been like, oh, it's not going to stay. Mm. Four to five, it's not going to stay. Five to six, oh, the, you know, this is just temporary. Six to seven, this is just temporary. Yeah. If buyers and sellers had known the past two years that rates would have done this, would there have been more transaction churn already over the past two years? Ooh. The, the psychology. Now, now think about it from that side where they're like, one thing that occurred is because everybody kept getting told that rates were going to come down is that right. it discouraged transactions, right? Now, so let's play this out. I love, I love, so I can play this out pretty quick. So let's, let's take the segments. Cause I always think there are three segments of buyers. Yeah. First time home buyers, they would have been more aggressive, no question. Yeah. Move up sellers, which are the ones that are frozen today. Do they buy? Do they sell and buy thinking that rates will be up 400 basis points? I think they do. More aggressive think, than last year. Yeah, more aggressive than last year, no doubt. I mean, that would be yeah. hard to be less aggressive. But I think it would be meaningfully more aggressive because what they're going to be saying is, hey, let's sell our home that we have equity in that is very liquid. Let's take all that equity here. Yeah, I know we're going to sell a three, but we'll buy a six before it gets to eight when it's unaffordable. So I think there's a good segment of the move up buyer. It's probably 30% that make the move that didn't make the move because they thought they would come back down. And now they missed the boat, right? Yeah. Because now it's just flat out unaffordable to move. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so now if you flip it, one thing that telling everybody that rates are going to go lower, go lower does is it incentivizes people who do make the churn in this period to think that, oh, I could refi quickly. Oh, I hate that. Yes. Some to brokers and real estate agents already saying, hey, I'm going to be able to refi this in six months. So, oh, okay. So yes. maybe the effect I said took off some transaction volume. But then this effect, which is that feeling of, hey, if I go out and do this, I'll be able to refi quickly, maybe canceled it out. That that's where I've been kind of debating this. I think if, I think the latter oh, is five percent, ten percent. Yeah. Where the other is thirty. I think I think it's I think it's more meaningful than and again, if if you if you have if you're in at three and you know they're going to eight, you might make the move at five or six, but you simply don't make it at eight yeah. today. So yeah pretty great yeah. that's fun that's a fun brain teaser yeah yeah it was a fun one uh and the reason i thought of it is because i was kind of wondering if these groups like mortgage bankers association because they've been accused of being like you know too much honest, yeah. broker yeah. side if they actually were doing a disservice to brokers because there oh. could have been more transaction volume one and then two if you have too many people in the industry holding out for false hope that hurts right. people the players who are in it for the long game because there does yeah. need to be some employment churn out. Um, oh, I agree. Go from that high transaction volume to an environment where we're not going back to the pandemic highs for transaction volume. No, it's no just doubt. Not, not, no, for years, we're not going back there for years. Resi Club Analytics, folks, go there today. Put in your email. Get five newsletters a week. Lance, you're amazing, buddy. Take care. Thanks. Bye.